All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Dana. I'm a member of our education team here at the Aquarium, and I am so excited that you're joining us this morning to listen and learn a little bit more about penguins. All right. And so we're going to be exploring what we know about penguins, maybe making a list of what we're wondering about penguins. What do we want to know? And throughout this program, we would love to have your participation. We do have a number that's going to show up right down here. Uh, that we will be taking live questions from. I'm joined in the studio by two of my friends. I have Luke and James over here. James is going to be fielding questions and passing them to me, and Luke is going to be the one controlling what's going on the screen uh, next to me and behind me. So if you want to join us and you want to uh, ask some questions, maybe answer some questions that I ask, that number is going to be right here. It's 562 286-1838. We'd love to hear from you throughout this program, and we'd love to hear from you if you're watching after this program. We are streaming live, but this will be available um, online for you to explore afterwards, and we do have an email address that uh, we monitor when we're not filming live, and so that email address is going to be live at lbaop.org. So once again, if you're tuning in and watching live right now, text those questions to this phone number. If you're watching after our live stream, again, shoot us an email at live at lbaop.org. All right, everyone, now we're going to get started and talk, uh, talk a little bit about penguins. So what do we know about penguins? Hmm, maybe we can start by making some observations. How does that sound? We're going to throw some penguin pictures up on the screen behind me and see what we notice. Oh my, those are beautiful penguins, don't you think? Well, what do we know about this penguin? What do we look at? Let's see, well, they're pretty tall. These ones are really slender and tall looking, but they've got this kind of squat little round body also. They've got really long beaks, okay? Really long beaks right here. What else do we know? So let's take a look at their coloration. Hmm. Ah, they have these really white bellies right here. Good observation. And what color is their back? Is it red? No. Is it yellow? No. That back is gonna be a darker color. It's typically black, right? So we've got the white bellies, the black backs. Now these right here are king penguins. And king penguins are also known for this little comma-like yellow shape, as well as that slight yellowness uh, on their chest, and of course in their beak right here. So king penguins, are found uh, on rocky beaches, as you can see here, but they look very similar to another species of penguins, which is really the penguin species that we all think about when we think penguins. Let's go ahead and see what those animals look like. Aha! All right, so these penguins right here are emperor penguins, and you can see they look very similar to those kings, right? But do you notice any differences? Let's take a look. Hmm. Well, I notice that their feet are a little bit different. They're not as slender down here, right? They're a little bit more uh, rotund of a body. They're a little bit darker up here. That comma-like shape on the king penguin is not quite as obvious up here. But what about this one over here and this one right here? What do you notice about that, those individuals? And if you look, in fact, they're all over the place. There's one there and there and there and there and there and there and there. Those look a little bit different. What do we think those individuals might be? Well, they kind of have a similar body shape, right? But their colors are different. I wonder why that might be. Hmm. Why? Ooh, look, this one right behind me here. Why do they look similar but slightly different? Well, they're smaller, right? Maybe these are baby penguins. And if you guessed that they were baby penguins, you are right, my friends. Baby penguins are usually a lot fluffier than their adults. And we're going to take a look and explore some penguin feathers to talk about why they might be nice and sleek like this or why they're really fluffy like their babies. But before, oh, perfect. This is a juvenile or a young one of a baby that, uh, or of a species that we have right here at the aquarium. Now, those don't look the same as those emperor or king penguins, do they? What differences do you notice on these animals? Hmm. Well, I notice that their beak's a little bit different, right? It's not quite as sharp and pointy. Hmm. I notice that they don't have that yellow on their chest or on the side of their face right here, right? 
So this must be a different species. If you recall, we looked at the king penguin first, then the emperor penguin, and this species right here, these are called Magellanic penguins. And this is the species that we have here at the aquarium. And this is an adult. Well, this also looks different. So why do babies and adults look different, do you think? What's important when they're aging up or what's important when they're nice and little ones? Let's take a look at a baby, baby penguin and see if we can figure out a real obvious change. Oh, oh my goodness. It's so fluffy, right? If you noticed all of these feathers right in here, baby penguins are incredibly fluffy, right? And then as they get older, we'll jump back to that juvenile or that kind of teenager penguin. That's going to be these three right here. They're not quite as fluffy, but they still don't have their adult colors, right? Now let's think about this in terms of humans. Do human babies look just like adults? Hmm. Last I checked, my little, little baby friend walking around, they don't have like a suit and tie. They're not going to work, right? They don't have a beard growing or anything like that. Babies look quite different from adults, right? And it's just the same in the animal kingdom. Now, as they transition to teenagers, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between a teenager human and an adult, right? Teenagers are usually a little bit smaller. Uh, they kind of have what we still call a baby face, right? They might have a little bit rounder face. And then as we age into adults, that's when we start to look a little bit more um, grown up, as we like to think, right? Some of us are a little bit taller. Um, some of us kind of lose that, that baby weight in our face. And, and animals will do the same thing. Here's another example of an adult Magellanic penguin. So their coloration is very different than that baby, fluffy little baby, or that juvenile or teenager, right? And now this is their adult, what we call plumage. This is their adult coloration. So they have uh, this white belly right here, and then they have this black back right here, okay? The white belly and the black back, hmm. That's something that we've noticed on all the species we've explored so far. And um, let's see, we've got some questions over here. I think that's uh, Adara wanted to know why are penguins black and white? And that's a really great question. So uh, they prefer to dress very formal, right? With a bow tie and uh, the female penguins might be walking around in a dress. No, I'm just kidding everyone. They're not going to any black tie events. Instead, penguins have something called counter shading, okay? Now, counter shading is that white belly and that black top, or it could be just like a lighter belly and a darker top. Now, these penguins, there's something a little bit different about them. What color are they? Well, first of all, they're very cute. This is the smallest penguin species in the world. Emperor penguins, like the big ones we saw earlier, can be up to four feet high, which is right around here. These are called little blue or fairy penguins, and they are much smaller. In fact, I would be off screen if I was down hanging out with a little blue penguin. But that's right, my friends, just like the name suggests, they are blue. However, they still have that lighter belly and that darker back. So let's explore counter shading. Let's talk about what that means. Counter shading is that lightness and darkness. And I want you to think about where these animals live. Okay. A lot of them swim through the ocean. And we'll talk about that too, because we don't usually think about birds that swim, right? Now, as an animal, a penguin or a lot of sharks or a lot of fish, a lot of sea animals have counter shading. As they swim through the ocean, if you were looking down on them from above, that dark back of theirs would actually blend in with the darkness going on uh, below, right? The darkness of the ocean. But if you were swimming down below them and looking up, what else are you looking at? Hmm. Well, you're going to be looking at the light shining on the surface of the water. So that lighter belly allows them to kind of blend in with the surface of the water right there. So this is a way of counter shade, uh, of, sorry, of camouflaging with your environment when you're living in the water column, right? So that is a great question. We've got some more down here. Uh, it looks like Brandon wants to know how fast do they swim? Really good question. Now, penguins on average are swimming around four to eight miles per hour. We actually have a video of them swimming around right here. Magellanic penguins, um, I'm going to step off so you can kind of see them moving around. Magellanic penguins can get up to 12 to 15 miles per hour. And another species, which we'll check out a photo of in a little bit, the Gentoo penguin can reach 22 miles per hour, which is pretty fast. Let's see. We have another question down here as you were, oh, here's our Gentoo penguins. 
Aren't they great? Now, what are some observations we can make about these individuals? Hmm. I love that we have both sides right here. You can see they have that black back, right? Darker coloration on the back. And then their bellies are all white. So they also have that counter shading. Again, this is something that we see in our uh, penguins, all of our penguin species. Now we do have another question. Why do the males take turns sitting on the egg? That's an awesome observation. If we know much about penguins, we know that when they have an egg, uh, mom or dad might be sitting on that egg. In fact, this is an, a beach right here with a bunch of Magellanic penguins. And well, first of all, this doesn't look exactly how I would picture a penguin habitat, but we'll talk about that in a moment. This beach has thousands of penguins on it, and this is where they come to nest. Now, they'll nest um, in little holes and ridges up in here. And again, mom and dad will take a moment to take care of that egg. And that is because um, they have to take turns hunting for food, right? A lot of animals will fast while they're taking care of a chick or taking care of an egg. Uh, penguins are ones that will go out and take advantage of uh, having the two parents there to help out. That was a really great question. Now, another one was where do penguins live? And that's a really good move to uh, transition us into this habitat right here. So penguins in general live in the Southern hemisphere. So I want you all to picture a globe. In fact, I think we have a photo of a map that we can explore. If we wanna pull up that picture of the map there. All right, so in a moment, we're gonna see a globe, though it's a flat globe. And there's a line that kind of moves right through the center here. Does anybody know what that line is called? Hmm. Well, if you guessed the equator, you are right. And that equator, uh, kind of is the demarcation between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And penguin species all live in the southern hemisphere. But if you notice, this blue coloration is where our penguins live. There's a, a lot of them down in Antarctica. But the southern hemisphere can go all the way up here towards the equator. In fact, boop, right there, that's the northernmost penguin species, and that's the Galapagos penguins. Now, along this coastline here, okay, this can be kind of rocky habitat, just like we might have here in Southern California. And so that beach that we saw behind us with all of those Magellanic penguins, uh, if we can get that beach with all the Magellanics back on the screen here, then we can see, let's see. There we go, it's coming up, perfect. So this does not look like a typical habitat that we might picture penguins in, which is usually icy or snowy, right? However, a lot of penguins live in this rocky habitat. Ex uh, for example, our, our Magellanic penguins, like we have here at the aquarium. And so um, another question was, why, oh, how long do they live? That's a good one. It depends on the species, but they can live anywhere from six to 20 years. However, we have had a penguin here at the aquarium that lived well into his late 20s. And at first you might be like, well, hmm, why did it live so long if they really only live six to 20 years? Well, Penguins here at the aquarium get really good health care. Do you go to the dentist and get your teeth checked out? Yeah, that's good. Do you go to the doctors and get, do an annual exam or get a physical? If there's any athletes out there, we usually have to get physicals be before our sporting events start. We give our penguins the same care uh, to make sure that they're living long, healthy lives. Now, this is an example of our habitat right here. You can see two penguins hanging out. Look at them. And you hear that? What is that? What is that sound? Oh my gosh. So, penguins, they do something um, called braying, and it's basically like a donkey noise. If you can hear those noises right now, those are our penguins communicating. But what do you notice about this habitat behind me? Like I said, this is our habitat here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Let's take a look at it for a moment. Well, I notice rocks, right? So they must be in more of the South America population of penguins, not down in Antarctica. Let's see. I also notice little holes in the back. Those are little nesting holes. Remember that I mentioned Magellanic penguins will nest in the holes on the beach. And so we have uh, some nesting boxes back there. Aren't they cool looking? Oh, I love it. So 
So again, these are all of our Magellanic penguins right here. Now, we're going to take a couple more questions, and that's going to transition us into the more Arctic penguins, okay? Um, one of the questions was, what do they eat? That's a really great question, because I know I'm always thinking about food, right? In fact, I'm very hungry right now. Are you hungry? I'm always hungry. Well, what do penguins eat? Penguins like to eat all sorts of things that they would find in the ocean. Most of the time, penguins are going to be eating small fish, anything that can fit in their beak, or they also eat krill. And I'm going to go over um, to a special camera on the side and show you what krill is. So this stuff right here is krill. Krill is, now not the disc, that's just how we hold it, but the krill is the little animals found inside right here. And so krill is small, kind of shrimp-like animals. Uh, they're a type of plankton. They drift through the ocean. And so some penguins will feed on krill just like this. Do you know of any other animals in the ocean that like to eat krill? Hmm. If you guessed a blue whale, you're spot on. Blue whales, which are the largest animals to ever live on planet Earth, they like to eat krill as well. Who would have thought a penguin and a whale feeding on the same thing? Now we're going to jump back to the main screen here. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the feathers and what penguins do. Um, because we have a great question here and it was, why do penguins slide on their bellies? That's a good question. But I have another one for you. If you were able to move all around your habitat, all around your house, all around your school, going to the grocery store, just by slipping and sliding on your belly, would you do it? Because I certainly would. That sounds like fun, right? Now, penguins, they oftentimes, if they're not living in uh, South America or up in the Galapagos or up in that warmer habitat, uh, they live on ice, right? We have a lot of penguins that live down in Antarctica. Uh, two species that live down there are going to be the emperor penguins, like these uh, pictured right here. And the other one is the Adelie penguin. I believe we have another photo of that. Now, this is a funny photo because it's looking at us straight on, and so its nose is pointing right at us. So if you see the beak right here, he looks pretty goofy. But Adelie penguins, again, there's that white belly and that black back. Adelie penguins and emperor penguins both live in icy habitats. So they're going to be sliding around on their bellies. Um, their bellies, or their feathers in particular, are very slick. That allows them to slide without, um, which is a way of them um, moving and transporting themselves without wasting a ton of energy because they're dealing with wind, they're dealing with slipperiness. A lot of penguins waddle, their legs are, their knees are way up here. We just can't tell. And so when they walk, it's pretty hard, right? So sliding is their way of doing that without wasting as much energy. Um, but I said they were really slick. Their feathers are very, very um, oily and that allows them to block the cold weather and the cold water. So I'm gonna show you um, back on that special camera again, what, oh, look at them all. So here's another, uh, these are Gen 2 penguins again. They also live in an icy habitat, as you can see. Uh, but look, they almost look like they're walking around off balance, right? Like I said, oftentimes it's really windy. They're dealing with the slippery ice. One of my favorite pastimes is to share videos with my friend Sarah of penguins that are struggling to walk. So if you find yourself bored during our stay at home, uh, explore some of those penguins because they're pretty great, right? And they kind of waddle and, oh, they might trip. And so, like I said, sliding on their bellies is a really easy way uh, to move around without expending that energy. But like I said, we're going to go check, a, uh, check out what their feathers look like. So, I'm going to show you what their feathers look like right here. Kind of, let me get the light a little bit better for you. Whoop, I don't know if that worked. Let's see if I can do that. We can just take a look. What do they look like? Hmm, well, these are really small and they're really fluffy. Now, I got a question for you all. This might be for the adults who are listening. Does anybody like sleeping on down pillows? Does anybody like those super fluffy pillows? Right? Well, we call these small feathers that penguins have right there, they're down feathers. They're going to be the fluffy feathers that are kind of creating an air barrier. And then they have those slicker feathers over the top. Now, penguins, like I said, that live in that cold habitat there, they're going to be swimming through really cold water. But how do they stay warm? Well, how do other animals stay warm? Hmm. Let's think about our whales and our dolphins and our seals. 
What do they have on their body that keeps them warm? Does anybody know? That's right, my friends. Whales, dolphins, and seals, and other marine blubber. Now, blubber is like a thick, fatty layer that kind of acts as uh, an insulation layer to keep them warm. Now, penguins, they're not walking around with a bunch of fatty layers. Instead, they use a different type of insulation. They're going to be using an air space between their body and the surrounding cold water. And another marine mammal does the same thing. I'm going to hold up something special right here and show you what that might be. Does anyone know what this is? I know it's kind of hard to see. I'll hold it a little bit closer. Now it's just really dark. So this is sea otter fur. Now sea otter fur, sea otter fur is very, very dense. It's a very thick. In fact, it's the thickest fur or hair of any animal on earth. If you were to hold up a space the size of a quarter, within that space right there, on a sea otter skin, there are over one million hairs. One million. Now, I would have to shave your head and 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 put it all together to get a million hairs. But sea otters have that in just the space of a quarter. Now, the reason they do that is they trap air in that really dense fur. And that air is what's going to be keeping them warm against that cold water. And penguins do the same thing. So it's amazing how when you start to compare different animals, penguins and sea otters, who would have thought they had anything similar? And yet they have a very similar adaptation of using that airspace. So if you look at the penguins on, uh, feathers on this penguin, you can kind of see that they're like, they're really slick. They're overlapped. They're very small. And that's going to keep air in there. Have you ever looked in a penguin or watched a penguin preen themselves? That means they're like cleaning themselves with their beak. Well, that's their way of making sure that their feathers are nice and healthy and nice and um, slick and nice and, and fluffed so that they can maintain that air layer. Now, we have some other questions over here that I want to uh, explore. So let's go ahead and answer some of those. Uh, let's see. We had a question of how many species of penguins are there and why are they different? That's a really great question. There are 17 species of penguins in the world. 17, right? Isn't that crazy? I think most of the time when we think penguin, we think of like one penguin, right? And yet there are 17 species that live all around here, okay? Why are they different? That's a follow-up question. Well, they're different because of the different habitats that they live in, right? Penguins that live down here in Antarctica are going to be very different than the penguins who live in the Galapagos, okay? This is a really rocky habitat. Uh, it's a little bit warmer water. Ah, here we go. Here's some Galapagos penguins. They look very similar to Magellanic penguins. And they live on this rocky um rocky habitat right here as opposed to those other penguins that we were exploring earlier and they live on there we go here's our gentoos they live on this really icy habitat now animals are adapted and adaptation is something that an animal has that helps it survive in their habitat and so if you're living in ice versus living in rocks you're going to be live uh you're going to be found with different adaptations right now, another question, Logan and Lucas want to know, do different species eat the same thing? Great question, you two, and they do. So as different as penguins are, they are still penguins, right? And so um, they have very similar, oops, this side, very similar beaks. In fact, I can show you a penguin beak right here. This is a, a model of a Magellanic skull, okay? A little bit different than what's on the screen right now, but if you look at that beak versus this beak, they're both long. This one just might be a little bit pointier right? So they might be eating different kinds of fish, chasing different prey, but they're all, oh, there we go. They're all going to be, I got to figure out how to do this. There we go. <laughs> they're all going to be um, eating small fish or krill. All right. So if you ever wanted to know what the inside of a penguin head looked like, uh, this is kind of it right there. We can kind of show you, right? If you can picture, obviously, obviously it's going to be a little bit bigger than this, uh, but we've got the beak coming out and we've got the big skull going on in there. Um, so great question. Do they all eat the same things? Yeah, for the most part. Now, another question was, how many penguins do we have here at the aquarium? Another really good question. We have, um, 20 penguins, I believe. I might be off by one or two, uh, but we have 20 penguins. Again, they are Magellanic penguins, but we also have something that's really special here at the aquarium. 
four of our birds actually came from that natural population out there. Um, so our, bird, our Magellanic penguins are usually found in Argentina, kind of a Patagonia area, and yet we found four that were stranded and lost in Brazil. They were brought back to zoos and aquariums, nursed back to health, and now we have some of those penguins right here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Uh, again, this is our penguin habitat right here. What observations can we make about this, uh, this habitat? <laughs> well, I noticed one of our penguins waddling around, which I absolutely love. Remember, I mentioned that it's kind of hard for them if you look at it. Their balance isn't great. Oop. <laughs> and so I did mention that penguins do have knees. Okay? Their knees are actually way up here in their chest. They're a little bit higher. Okay. So as they waddle around, what else do we notice? Well, like I said, Magellanic penguins are the ones that are not living in ice. They're going to be living in um, that rocky habitat. If you look down here, we've got some river rocks kind of embedded into the main structure. Uh, we've got different texture right up in here. And we also have these mats. Well, what are those there? <laughs> He's like, yeah, we have a mat right here, right? So we like to provide our penguins with different textures. Okay, they, they can feel through their feet. They're exploring their habitat. And so that's one way that we can keep their feet nice and healthy as they move through um, those rocks and, and those river rocks. And then actually over... Um, let's see if our rocks are right here over this direction. Uh, that's where all of our water is going to be. We do provide our penguins with water. We can show you what that underwater camera looks like as well. Let's see. Can you hear it? So that, again, is our Magellanic penguins making that noise. They're communicating. And communication is one way that penguins can find their mom, their dad, uh, or their chicks. So look at them all. <laughs> I love this. Uh, so our penguin habitat is fairly close to our sea lion habitat. And you can actually hear the sea lions go off, and then the penguins go off, and it's a very a musical chorus as you walk through there. So um, if you've never had the chance to explore our two habitats, I do encourage you to check out the aquarium once our doors are open. We are so excited to get everybody back. Uh, we are, are loving this, but of course we do miss you guys. So we hope we get to see you here sooner rather than later. Uh, but this is that underwater habitat that I was uh, talking about. So up here, that's where the, the rocky beach is that we were watching those penguins hanging out on. And right there, um, we penguins swimming around. So this is what it looks like underneath. Uh, again, not icy, right? But it is very chilly water. Uh, we had one just swimming right out over there. So, all right. So my friends, we're going to explore. Uh, we do have a couple more questions from you. And so then we're going to wrap it up here. Um, and I'll try to cover all of those and answer them as best as I can. We had a question, why do they waddle when they walk? Like, think I answered this, but to explain it a little bit more clearly, it's because their knees are really high right? You and I can walk and we can bend our knees. We can do it, right? High knees, just like that. Uh, penguins can't do that. So they're kind of waddling with their knees up in their chest. <laughs> uh, now, Gabriella wants to know, how do we know male uh, from female? That's a really good question. And it's uh, kind of complicated. We actually have to do a blood test to determine whether or not it's a male or a female. So some animals, the male and female looks different. But with penguins, uh, you have to actually test their blood and see what it says. Savannah wants to know, why are babies so fluffy? Well, Savannah, it's because they're not swimming yet. So the adults have that kind of slick layer of feathers covering the fluff. Uh, our, peng our babies, they, uh, they don't have that yet. They're just nice and fluffy and staying warm using those down feathers. Um, Daphne wants to know, how do penguins find their nest? So I kind of hinted at this, talking about that communication, how they find mom, dad, or the baby. Penguins use a very unique call, right? So um, a small uh, a smell or a call can kind of alert them to their mate and they can find their way back to their nest, which is really cool. Um, a lot of animals will use scent and sound as a way of determining location. Uh, our last question that we're going to get to today is Felix wanting to know, uh, do penguin have teeth? Oh, Felix, great question. Penguins have something really, really cool inside of their mouth. If you were to open a penguin's mouth and open wide, well, they're eating slippery fish. Look at them. <laughs> they're eating slippery fish. And fish 
have a tendency to swim out of a mouth underwater, right? And so penguins have something inside. It's not like teeth, but it's similar in the sense uh, that it kind of latches onto the food. It's called a little papillary, or uh, am I pronouncing that right? Papillary? It's papillary. And it's like little finger-like protrusions inside their throat that help keep that food down. I think we actually have a photo of it. I'm not sure if it's... Um, not sure if we have access to it right now. We'll have to take a look. Um, but while we wrap up here, we'll see if we can find that photo. If not, I do highly encourage you, with adult permission, of course, uh, to see if you can find a picture of what like. leatherback sea turtles and sea turtles in general also have that um, adaptation. Again, there's that adaptation word, something that helps an animal survive in its habitat. Now, friends, as we pull up that photo again, I do want to thank you for joining us this morning. We're so excited every time we get your questions coming in. Um, it's really putting us on the spot, trying to think, oh, do I know this? Do I know this? So it's a fun challenge for us. I hope you're learning a lot at home. Um, like I said, we're really enjoying what we're doing. It's great that we can come in here, but my goodness, we miss you. Uh, we are counting down the days till we can open our doors and have you all come back and explore the animals that we've been talking about uh, with your own eyes walking around here. So we're seeing if we can get that photo up. Doesn't look like we have it right now. Uh, maybe we can throw it into a program later if you want to stick around and keep watching. Otherwise, we'll be back at 11 o'clock and we're going to be learning more about penguins, but we're also going to be learning about other birds. We're going to be exploring from penguins to puffins and all the other birds that start with letters other than P. So come back, join us at 11, and we'll see you in a bit. Bye, everyone.